I'm Chris Walker at the International Forum for Democratic Studies. Welcome to another edition of Democracy Ideas. I'm joined today by Reagan Fassell Democracy Fellow, Charles Mangangera, who will speak with us on Zimbabwe. Charles, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, Chris. Thank you. Charles, given the wide range of challenges that Zimbabwe faces on governance, why is it that you've decided to focus on the military's special role in blocking improvements to governance in the country? Well, I, you know, as I reflected on uh, the challenges that we have in the country, and in particular, uh, what has happened over the last four or five years when we had a power sharing government, uh, which was supposed to bring in, you know, uh, uh, the reform of state institutions and creating conditions for, you know, open and, and, and free political competition. Uh, but what we saw was that there was, uh, you know, that process was kind of, you know, supplanted and uh, uh, Zimbabwe's transition has become, you know, uh, complicated. Uh, and as I reflected on that, I realized that, you know, the military has really been playing an important role, has taken a much more prominent role in terms of determining uh, the course of, of events and in making sure that, uh, you know, Mr. Mugabe's party retains political power. Uh, the military has taken over most of the strategic institutions. It has also taken over, uh, you know, if, if you look at the economy, I think they have taken over uh, most of the strategic industries, ensuring that they have used those resources that have accrued uh, from their control to maintain the totalitarian grip on power by Mr. Mugabe. And in your view, in what ways has ZANU-PF's militarization caused the militarization of wider Zimbabwean society? Well, that's, that's an interesting question because what we have seen in Zimbabwe, I think, is a conflation of the state and the party. So in some ways, you, you, you fail to distinguish uh, the state from the party. The party sometimes becomes the state and the military has become, you know, infused in all of this. If you look at the 2013 election, for instance, which we just came out of, um, you had people coming from the military and going to ZANU-PF, the party, uh, to, you know, to, to, to design the, the, the electoral campaign, to design the voter registration process. So they basically took control of everything. But beyond that, if you look at the key institutions that are critical for, for power, if you go to the judiciary, for instance, you will realize that uh, uh, you will find some of the judges, they come from the military. If you go to uh, the public broadcaster, the Zimbabwe Broadcasting Corporation, for instance, you will realize that the person who's heading that institution comes from the military and has been given a farm in, in you know, one of the, of the prime areas. If you go to the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, uh, you will find that the person who's heading the Electoral Commission uh, uh, and, and the people who are manning the secretariat are people from, from the military and they have been given some of these uh, uh, you know, patronage benefits. If you look at uh, society and the economy, uh, most of the key industries, if you go to mining, for instance, Chiaz, where we are, we are mining diamonds, you will realize that uh, there are Chinese companies there that have gone into joint ventures with uh, companies that are headed by people with a military tradition or who come from the military. So the whole society has been militarized. And uh, in my view, that has complicated uh, the kind of transition that we would want to see because they want to maintain uh, total control of the state for purposes of accumulating personal and factional benefits. You've described very eloquently the opportunities that are available to the senior ranks of Zimbabwe's military, but is your sense there's a distinction between the upper ranks of the military and the more junior ranks, which may have a different vision and view of how Zimbabwe should be governed? Well, I, I often say uh, for democracy actors in Zimbabwe who are thinking about uh, maybe possible positive actions that can be taken in future in terms of uh, you know, security sector reform. I think that there is a professional country which is, you know, below uh, or in the lower ranks of the of the of the military command, uh, which just wants to do its job, which which is committed to, uh, you know, professional work. And uh, I think that's that's the professional country that we ought to be thinking about going forward. And finally, Charles Robert Mugabe has recently celebrated his 90th birthday. And while the precise time of a political transition isn't known, what, in your view, would be the most important steps for the political opposition and reform-minded Zimbabweans to take in order to encourage better democratic outcomes in the future in Zimbabwe? 
Well, I think that the, the biggest challenge uh, going forward for democracy actors in Zimbabwe is going to be, you know, the reform of state institutions uh, that have become so compromised because, uh, you know, the regime has, uh, has really, you know, bastardized most of these institutions. So to create a professional uh, ethic within those institutions so that they act in an impartial and non-partisan way uh, is going to be one of the biggest challenges. But more importantly, you know, for me, even a post-Mugabe Zimbabwe, the challenge that we are going to have is how do you untangle, you know, these tentacles of the military all over the place? So industry, mining, business and everything. You have all of these people having control. So it's really like a mafia, mafia system. And uh, how to untangle that and ensure that you really have, you know, uh, 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 a professional... Uh, business sector? How do you ensure that you really have, you know, a thriving private sector which is run by people with innovation and ideas and who are not just benefiting from state patronage? I think that's going to be the next biggest challenge for democracy actors in Zimbabwe. Charles Mangangera, thank you so much for joining us and sharing your views. Thank you very much, Chris.